kind of just to start out, can you just tell us a little bit about how you got going in the business, how, where you started out, and how you got to where you are today? Um, well, I grew up in Maine, uh, so it was kind of an unlikely place to start. Um, but my parents uh, were really, really cool about uh, kind of uh, supporting what I wanted to do at a really young age. I, I think it was about 10 when I kind of got um, the bug or whatever. And um, uh, they uh, would drive me down to New York if there were auditions. And um, when I was 12, uh, I did this show on Broadway called High Society. Um, and so sort of moved to New York for the run of that. And that was kind of how I got started. Okay. And uh, Rocket Science, did somebody just spot you and see you? and? Well, actually, um, I mean, I just auditioned for Rocket Science, um, and I did this film called Camp before that. Uh, I don't know if that was part of uh, the casting director's decision to bring me in for Rocket Science or not, but Rocket Science was just a pretty cut-and-dry kind of audition situation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was up at Sundance when Rocket Science kind of exploded and everybody loved it, and they kept talking about you. and. Uh, people love to talk about like how fast you talked. Yeah, that in that movie, I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. That was um, really nerve wracking and difficult. <laughs> um, it, it everybody would kind of ask me how I learned to do it, and I, I never really had a, a clear answer. It was just a matter of kind of just trying it again and again, and you know, spitting it out and just sweating buckets during every day. Yeah, I would think so, because your character needs to be so self-assured. Yeah. She can't say one word inappropriately, you know, incorrectly. If you stumble just once, and, and plus that it was an indie film, so it's not like they had tons of film to burn. I yeah, and, and so I would really, really try, I would really try to, um, uh, to get it right, because uh, I, I knew that you know we had a tight schedule, and so when I would mess up the the cursing that would follow was really severe because I would be so disappointed in myself. <laughs> I was just trying so hard to um, kind of just get it together and power through it. And was Catherine like a fan of Rocket Science, or had she even seen it yet? Yeah, uh, Catherine actually saw Rocket Science at Sundance. Um, and, uh, oh, she was on the jury. That yeah, year, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And she she was actually the one who presented the award to the director Jeff Blitz at the closing kind of ceremonies, which was really cool. That is pretty cool that she yeah. was sitting there in the audience watching it as a juror and mm -hmm. looking at you and going, "Wow, I'd love to use that clip someday." <laughs> yeah. And now here you are. So um, tell us a little bit. Believe it or not, there are some people out there that might not necessarily know who your character is. So tell us, give us your breakdown. No, I mean I, I always feel like a if if you read the books a little while ago, maybe you wouldn't remember my character. So I think that's totally valid. Um, Jessica is just uh, she. Well, she's uh, a friend of Bella's, um, but she's just human. So <laughs> uh, she uh, is kind of a chatterbox and really insecure and. Uh, she basically uh, is kind of jealous of all the attention that Bella gets, and uh, um, but I think she likes Bella, but at the same time is kind of uh, feels a little threatened, but you know, kind of wants to um, keep her keep her as close as possible. Mm -hmm. So, is it safe to say that she's kind of like the character from Rocket Science, but with definitely lower self esteem? Or what um, other differences do you see between the two? Oh, I mean, I think they're completely different. Uh, I, I don't think that, because I think that a lot of people, when they think of Jessica, just sort of remember her as um, the the witch, let's say. <laughs> um, and uh, and I, I don't really think that it's as much, like, yeah, she's kind of catty, but um, she's just so kind of pathetic and, and, and just hopelessly insecure and, um, you know, pretends to be confident, but uh, is just kind of a mess. So mm -hmm. it was actually kind of really fun to, to just be a mess and embarrass myself and make situations as awkward and uncomfortable as possible. Like what kind of stuff do you do? Um, just like, I mean, at, like the first time I see Bella and Mike uh, talking, because, you know, I like Mike in the movie, um, just sort of trot over and, you know, work my, like weasel my way into the convo and uh, just make it really, really awkward because it's so clear that I have this agenda of like, I really like you and please don't talk to him because I like him. It's <laughs> just kind of sad.
So when we had uh, Melissa in here, the screenwriter, she was saying that in the movie at least, um, Jessica's been tweaked a bit to be more of a combination between Jessica and Lauren. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, certainly the the cattiness is played up a little bit, um, and uh, but I th and I think that some people actually tend to get Jessica and Lauren confused. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I just kind of felt like she was just so, like everything about the character to me seemed just really awkward. And um, because she's just clearly not this, you know, 10 foot tall, blonde, hot girl. So it's not like she really has the firepower to be the really catty, you know, mean girl. Um, so the attempts come off really, like, just awkward, and they're not really, um, they don't really have that venom, because she's just kind of pathetic. I don't know. <laughs> and she's just, she just wants to be liked so much. She's just so desperate. So she kind of thinks or wants to kind of be like the Angelina Jolie. Yeah, Jody, like I think she would love to way. be like the alpha female, and it's just not happening, you know? <laughs> The crush on Edward. Oh yeah. The books a little bit too. So I, I, obviously we know you and Mike have a thing going on throughout the movies too. But uh, tell us about the scenes with Robert and developing your crush. Is that played down a bit, or is it still pretty much the same in the movie? Um, I think it's pretty much the same. Um, you know, it would just basically be, uh, you know, if he would walk by, it's easy to get kind of googly eyed at Rob because you know he's so dreamy, and uh, and then the one scene actually the the one scene where we really interact and uh, Angela and I are supposed to be dazzled by him, that was the word in the script, um, uh, was really fun and it was, I think it was our last, it was my last night of shooting and um, it was kind of hard not to laugh the entire time just because to really play up that googly eyed dazzled thing felt really funny. Um, but uh, What did you guys do to, to depict it, to manifest it? Well, Rob kept giving me this look that was his, like, charming smile, but I thought it was his I'm about to laugh smile, <laughs> um, which would make me laugh. And, uh, but it actually kind of ended up working because I, you know, it, it was essentially uncomfortable laughter, and it really kind of made sense that I would be fighting this, you know, like almost like the church giggles when you're so, like, um, shocked or... I don't know. It it's kind of I think it might look kind of cute. I don't know. Like <laughs> just that I I can't like the second he speaks to me it's almost like I I get the church giggles, you know. You said you guys did a lot of improv and stuff like that. So what's one thing that maybe you guys added to the to the book a little bit that you're particularly proud of? Maybe something you came up with or... Oh, I don't know. Um, something the fans can watch and go, ooh, that's Anna who came up with that. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, there is one thing. It's so small, but like just this... Uh, this line Kristen has. Oh, I, I don't. I never know what I'm allowed to say. Um, just uh, Kristen has this line about uh, you know eating disorders, and then it sort of like cuts to me with a big chunk of food in my mouth. I don't like, and it's actually I don't know why it's so funny, but I think it's really funny. Um, it's just like this forkful of grapes or something. I don't know. Maybe it's not funny. Like, what did she say? Like, most girls here are, no, like, no, are so skinny they have, like, they have eating disorders and then you're just no, picking them out it's, or something? No, it's... I see, out of context, it doesn't really make oh, sense. Okay. I, I wish I could come up with something better because it doesn't really make sense, like, without the whole... Uh, uh. Um, let me think. Well, I mean, this isn't this isn't an intentional added improv, but I think I'm jumping a lot in in all the outdoor scenes, which doesn't which just looks like I'm jumping around, but it's because it's so cold. So if you were there, it would make perfect sense that I'm like jumping, but since you can't feel how cold it was that day, you, it looks like I'm just jumping around, which is really weird. So when, when we see Twilight, we should look in the background for you just leaping around like you're just so carefree. Just sort of like. Bouncing. I don't know. <laughs> Very bizarre. <laughs> um, 
I mean, it was a cakewalk after rocket science. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was I, actually, I think I remember Stephanie Meyer that day uh, that I was doing all the, the big speech about, you know, the Cullens and how weird they are, but secretly how I'm in love with them. Um, and because uh, it was just a lot of dialogue and... Um, uh, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Um, uh, yeah, she's 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 quite a chatterbox, but um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't too bad because it all seemed to kind of make sense and just come from this uh, really sweetly like just desperate place. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is some kind of trick that you have for like these kinds of movies where like, you know, when the other actor is delivering the line and you know you're just about to go, you just <gasps> take like a huge <laughs> breath like you're about to go, you know, for a diving or something? Well, I mean, like with Jessica, again, if, you know, she's got this agenda, particularly about gossip, that I think once she sees her opportunity to start dishing, like she, all other noise is just blocked out. It's like, um... You know, so other actors' dialogue, I think Jessica's just waiting for her turn to be like, oh yeah, and Alice is really weird, and, you know, Emmett's really bizarre, and blah.